If you're feeling anxious, I believe that right now your biggest downfall is that you believe you're an anxious person. When we attach a feeling to our identity, we start to view the world and our life through that lens. We constantly reinforce this idea that we are anxious, we are anxious, we are anxious. Things make us anxious, people make us anxious, we cannot handle the world around us. Everything is triggering, everything is too much, nothing can be done, this is who we are. But anxiety is a feeling, not a personality. It's something that everyone will experience because it's part of our nature as human beings. Some people might be more predisposed to feeling it, some people might be going through more stress stressful situations in their life, and some people simply might have just been dealt a bad hand. But those things are completely out of our control anyway. What we can control though are our reactions and actions. When we feel anxious, we don't have to be anxious. We can recognize that this is how we feel, but keep it separate from who we are. It's not us. It's a feeling separate from us. It will come and go just like any other feeling. And sometimes we can hear this and feel really frustrated, angry, misunderstood. How could you tell me how I feel? How could you tell me that I have control over my anxiety? This is how I feel. This is who I am. You're completely misunderstanding and invalidating me. And I can understand that point of view, but wouldn't you rather it to be this situation? Wouldn't, isn't it, doesn't it feel empowering and like such a relief to know that you do actually have some control here, that you don't have to have a life sentence to negative feelings and misery and suffocation and you don't have to always live out of fear. Isn't that better? than me sitting here and saying, I'm so sorry that you feel this way. I can't imagine, or I can't imagine what that must be like. I don't know how you go about your life, but there's nothing that can be done. This is who you are. This is who you'll always be. To me, that feels so heavy and like a life sentence but that's not the reality which is amazing <laughs> i am a massive overthinker and definitely have a tendency towards anxiety and i'm so highly attuned and affected by every little thing around me from people to the environment to my own thoughts to situations i would say that I'm a very highly sensitive person. However, I do not want to be letting myself spiral, letting myself be affected by all of these things that are mostly out of my control. I want to be excited and curious about life. I don't want to live from a place of fear and anxiety and worry, and I don't want to let that anxiety suffocate me. I don't want it to define me. And it doesn't matter to me if people other people define me as an anxious person I don't want to myself define myself as anxious because that is creating so many limitations on what I believe who I believe that I am what I believe that I can do and then what I set out in the world to do so it's a lifelong endeavor but it's something that I'm committed to I don't want to let anxiety rule myself or my life and I feel like I've come a long way since I first started being aware that I could have some control in this capacity in my life. And I want to share with you some things that have really helped me that I would love for you to try. You'll notice here that they are the little things. And it's always the little things, right? It's the little things that make up the big things. And the big things are more far and few between, whereas the little things stack up, add up, can be done on a more regular basis and they make up the bulk of our life, as I said. So these things help me remain happy, positive, excited as hopefully my default, my baseline, but on those days where I am confronted by bigger emotions or something has made me feel really anxious or I've just woken up feeling really anxious. These are also, so they're preventative measures, but they're also 
things that I've found helpful that if I push through when I'm not feeling good and do them anyway, I, without fail, always feel better. Not just not so anxious anymore, but actually happier and more positive as well. Okay, so first up, exposure to natural light. Within the first five minutes of waking up, two things, don't look at your phone, at a screen, at the artificial light first, and instead look out and get some sunlight in your eyes. Look out the window, go outside. Even if there's no direct sunlight coming through, there's still light, even if it's being blocked by clouds, even if it's raining. If there wasn't light, it would be dark. If you're waking up and it's dark, try to minimize the amount of artificial light that your eyes are, in, are taking in first thing in the morning. Natural light helps to set and regulate our circadian rhythm, which regulates all our body's internal processes. So if we are living in alignment or as close to alignment with the natural day cycle, then our body processes are have the chance to be in the greatest alignment possible. Then what you want to do is as soon as you can get outside and let your body get some natural light. Even if it's 10 seconds, it is better than nothing. You will feel better. Even if it's too cold, cold exposure in short bursts is really good for you. If it's too hot, sweating is so good for you. Basically, we just want to be in tune with the world around us. And if we're not living in a beautiful nature-ridden place, we can still be in alignment with the sun, with the light. Closely related to this, I've always found that if I am in a really negative spiral or I'm having a difficult, you know, few days, weeks, months, the best thing that I can do and the thing that I resist but I deep down know I crave is seeing as many sunrises and sunsets as possible. Understandably, this is far easier said than done especially when you are in a negative headspace or feeling highly anxious. But it, it really never fails to make me feel so much calmer, happier, more regulated, more grounded. Like I have a stable foundation in my life. I also feel better about myself for going out and doing something so simple, but what I know is so good for me. To briefly touch on screens again, I think we intuitively know that it's not the greatest thing for our health or our mental health to wake up and start scrolling straight away. So if we can try and not do that as well as limit the amount of screen exposure you have in the back half of your days. This is again to be in alignment with our circadian rhythm to help inform our body that the sun is going down in the sky. We need to start producing melatonin. We will need to start getting sleepy, prepare for rest, everything we've all heard before. This one goes really nicely with the light exposure point. When you step outside in the morning to get some light in your eyes and on your skin, make sure your bare feet touch the ground. That can be grass, dirt, concrete, not asphalt on the road because that doesn't have that same transfer of natural energy. But generally, if you can be barefoot somewhere outside, that's where you want to be. Again, even if it's for only 10 seconds, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, it's better than nothing. Human beings are natural beings and the world that we live in now, we're so disconnected from not just the natural world, but the general world around us. So if we can just get our bare feet on the ground, tell our bodies where it is on this planet, let it feel the energy from the earth from other beings and life forms around us we will feel happier calmer more peaceful my favorite way to start a regular just normal day is to wake up get changed and go for a barefoot barefoot walk outside as quickly as i can in the morning i get the light in my eyes the light on my skin and the earth beneath my feet and a little bit of gentle movement as well. As I'm going through this list, I realize how interconnected everything is. Gathering energy from more than just food really makes sense to me as a concept. You know, when you have a really deep conversation with a friend 
or you're laughing so much or you're listening to music or you go and exercise, you do some gentle stretching or you create art and you feel energized and sustained. That has to do with this concept of we can gather energy from more than just the food that we consume. And that's why that we can still eat well and eat enough food, but can feel unfulfilled, unhappy, undernourished, look tired, feel tired, because it's not always just about what we put into our bodies. Obviously we need to put enough food in, obviously we need to take care in what we do consume, but having energy is so much more than just that. So when it comes to talking about food, you know what makes you feel good and you know what doesn't. One of the kindest acts I believe we can show ourselves is eating more of what nourishes us, what we feel good eating, and less of the things that make us feel lethargic or feed our addictions, which I know can be really difficult when you are feeling lower and like you're in a negative place itself. But you can listen to what your body is saying. It's saying it wants comfort. It's saying maybe it wants sugar, maybe it wants fat, maybe it wants something warm. You can listen to those cravings. I believe that our body tells us what it needs. But before we dive into those foods with not really much nutritional value, I really try to eat a high protein, high fat, sustaining kind of meal beforehand. So I won't not allow myself to have those sugary things or those like chips or lollies or chocolate or like whatever, but I can have that after I have something that's actually nourishing and it actually satiates me as well. Because when we have those cravings, we might be craving sugar or fat or whatever, but we're also probably hungry. So if we can fulfill that need within us, that's a really, really great first step. And then we probably won't be so ravenous when we go towards those other foods. It's not about depriving yourself it's about caring for yourself. And something that I've found really, really helpful is to start the day, or as soon as you feel hungry in the morning, eat a nutritionally balanced, healthy, high protein meal. This will help keep you satiated for the day. It will reduce cravings that, you know, you might misinterpret simple hunger for cravings or your body will tell you that it is hungry through certain cravings it gives you enough energy you need to go about your day in an energetic and positive way and it tells you and your body that it is safe that there is enough food around it doesn't need to hold on to excess fat it doesn't need to be in this fight or flight mode that sometimes fasting can put it into when you fuel yourself adequately in the morning with food and sunlight, a little bit of exercise and natural light, your body doesn't need to be operating on adrenaline and in a really stressed state. And side tip, don't have caffeine first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. If you wanna have caffeine, have it after 90 minutes of waking, your body's not ready for it before then. You, you just don't need to be more jittery or have that nervous energy or be yeah, running off adrenaline or pumping your body to be into this certain stress state. Just don't have coffee first thing in the morning. Long story short, our bodies are made to move. We know this. We feel so much better when we move. Women need to be a little bit more particular and careful with how they move and to move in somewhat of an alignment with their cycle. So some days and weeks you'll have more energy and you can feel like you can really go after it whereas other days a gentle walk some stretching yoga is enough and we should be trying to listen as closely as we can to our bodies but pretty much all of us can benefit from more movement in our lives even if it is just gentle stretching movement is supposed to be enjoyable though and i know a lot of us feel like it's a chore i know that if i was to just go to the gym as my only form of exercise, I would find that so depressing for so many reasons. A, I'm inside, I'm in aircon, I am under artificial light, I am probably in my own world with my headphones in, not interacting with anyone else, I'm doing isolated movements, 
or I'm simply just moving because I want to lose weight or I want to gain muscle. When I like stack the factors up like that, it does sound like a chore. It sounds like I have to tick boxes and then move on and I can go on about my day. Whereas, as I said, movement is supposed to be fun. We get that wonderful endorphin rush when we do move and when we exercise and when we do it with other people. It doesn't feel like a chore. It feels like the absolute opposite of a chore. It's fun. And I think that the best way to have fun with movement is to play. And when you play, how much more confident and happy do you feel in yourself and in your body's ability and capability when you're just having fun with it? It's just so much better. This could be organized sport. This could be playing with friends and family, getting outside and kind of doing movements like you would when you were a kid walking barefoot on the grass, balancing on posts and beams, climbing trees, doing push-up challenges, trying to handstand or headstand or bring some music outside and dance with people, go for walks with people, skipping, like skipping ropes. The options are endless because we're made to move and we have so much fun doing it. So experiment, explore, be open, let your imagination run wild with it and let your creativity run wild. You really don't need any equipment, anything to have fun and to play. Just use whatever is in your environment around you or invest in some like balls, in some ropes. Just go climb a tree, honestly. <laughs> Once you push past the initial resistance, like anything, it becomes immensely easier and far more enjoyable and addictive, which is amazing. <laughs> when you're feeling anxious, it's so much easier not to bother with these things, even though they're pretty simple. But simple doesn't necessarily mean easy, especially at the start. But I think you've got to look at these like they're the foundations, the foundations of your stability, of your happiness, of your gratitude, of your zest for life. They're regular little installments of happiness and they are guaranteed ways of making you feel calmer, more grounded, more connected, less in your head and self-absorbed and if anything, simply less negative. And for that reason alone, they are so worth doing. Because yes, it's easier to wallow and stay in our anxious, anxiety, worry-filled bubble. But what is easier now in the present isn't necessarily easier for our future selves. And I hope you remember that you always have the power to choose.